Uh, hello, good evening, and welcome to the Majority Show broadcast live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, this is Scotland's number one anti national show, and we are glad that you are here with us tonight, going out live on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm here with the detestables, Mary Devlin and David Griffiths. Uh, what have we got for us tonight, David? Start with you. Tonight, I will be listing some of the answers Nicola Sturgeon was unable to give when she presented her white paper this week. Okay, and Mary, what have you got for us? Well, I know that we're all going to be talking about Nicola Sturgeon's ill-conceived and reckless economic plan, and I'll be talking about that great central bank that Nicola Sturgeon told us she will be setting up. Okay, so that's great. We will, And, of course, we will have a Zoomer of the Week which we always have. We will be back in just a moment. Right, uh, welcome back to the Majority Show. Um, got lots for you tonight. Uh, as usual, we'll give a huge shout out to donors, all of you who made this show possible. Uh, th thank you. Uh, we've, we've put, put, we contributed to the running costs and set up and everything like that. If you would like to donate, please do so at our website. You can go there and any donation, big or small, uh, everything helps right now, especially. And also, you'll be, we were not going to talk about it tonight, but we did do a billboard campaign, and donations for our next billboard campaign are ongoing. If you would like to donate to that, please do so at our website. And you can also buy a T-shirt or mug from our store. They're all at reasonable prices, and a little bit from each sale helps to support the show. And of course, we would also like to thank our friends at UK Union Voice and at United Against Separation for supporting the show, letting us broadcast directly to their Facebook pages from where I know many of you are watching right now. And if you can, uh, please uh, subscribe to the show on YouTube. If we get up to 1,000 followers, we can get more things happening. We are about 550, something like that at the moment. Every subscription helps. It just helps us get big, get higher up on the YouTube algorithm, gets more exposure. It's one way you can help us right now. Indeed. And wherever you are, please like, share, comment, tell your friends, extend our reach at the click of... A button. And as usual, I'll be managing all the comments as well as co-hosting tonight. So please try to keep your comments short and I'll try to get as many of them up as I can. Thank you. Right. Okay. Very good. Um, coming up, we're going to talk about Sturgeon's bin fire economic plan. So uh, let's go get, we'll get to that in a second. Hmm. <clears throat> Right, okay, uh, for some majority news, I was on Talk TV yesterday talking with Dr. David Bull. Uh, some people have remarked it's shocking to hear simple truths on the TV. How do you hear, how often do you hear that uh, there will be no referendum and that Sturgeon has no plan, that Sturgeon has no mandate and the hard border is insanity? Well, that's actually the position that's held by the majority of Scots. So yeah. why don't we hear that more on the TV? So anyway, I'll show you the first minute or so of a clip and see what you think. Joining me now is Mark Devlin. He's founder of The Majority, which is a voice for Scotland's anti-nationalist uh, majority. Good morning to you. Hi, David. How are you today? I should, very well, thank you very much. I imagine your eyes rolled when Nicola Sturgeon popped up again. Oh, it's not just eye rolling. It's much more than that. I mean, it's just uh, ongoing. What we call the never endum. It's just constant talk about uh, independence referendum that isn't going to happen. That is just taking up the whole media space in Scotland, and no one can talk about anything else. The act it's a big distraction, really, from the actual real problems that we have here. Many of them, in fact, most of them, caused by Nicola Sturgeon's government itself. I mean, uh, in, in many ways, you are right. Uh, she seems to forget that she is first minister of a country that faces very serious problems. Uh, certainly the cost of living. We know the drug problem in Scotland. We know about the poverty in Scotland. And I don't see her addressing any of these, these massive issues. She just talks about independence. 
Yeah, it's just a big, as I said, it's a big distraction. I mean, she wants to try and present her plan as being some kind of lifeboat uh, that Scots can get into to escape from uh, UK economic crisis. But in fact, all she's really offering is like a wheelie bin that's out in the middle of the ocean that's on fire and surrounded by sharks. Normal Scots <laughs> just are not really, uh, not really for this. Thing at all. I mean, everything that she's saying here is currency, EU, a hard border. She is just got no answers in any of these things at all. And right, well, there we go. Okay, so um, that was that. So, so um, Sturgeon's offering a life raft to escape the UK financial woes. Fun fact, so we've really been on fire in the middle of the ocean, surrounded by sharks. Who wants to get in? So let's talk a little bit more about the bin, the fire, and the sharks tonight. <laughs> we will be back in a second. Right, so starting with being alone in the ocean. If independence ever happens, Scotland will be left alone. That central bank, that currency, not in the UK or the EU. I don't know if the who this actually is supposed to sound appealing to. Um, what do you think, David? We'll start. I've been talking for a while. Why don't we just have we chat? Who do you think that's appealing to? Well, it can only be appealing to people who, above all else, want nothing to do with England, stroke Westminster, stroke London, stroke the traditional way of uh, government in this country. They are the only people this can possibly, you know, appeal to because there is nothing in any of the, the, the nonsense presented by Nicholas Sturgeon the other day that constitutes a, a framework for a sound economic policy for a new nation state. I mean, it doesn't even come one hundredth of the way towards setting up anything that would be needed for that massive, massive venture, that quite unprecedented venture, really, you know, and breaking away from an established um, economy, one of the world's top five or six economies, and starting your own little thing at a time when there is war in Europe, genuinely, and at a time when we've, we're just coming out of the most unprecedented um, pandemic that the world has seen in over a century, and at a time when oil prices and inflation are going through the roof, literally, and you want to start a new nation state now with its own currency. Now, I mean, what? Why, would, why on earth would you do that unless you're clinically insane, really? I mean, it's just utterly No, annoying. I mean, you think that nobody would actually want something like that. But, um, you know, when we put that clip up on Twitter, there were people were like, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to get in the wheelie bin. <laughs> you know, you're like, you're like, come on, mate. You know, there's, there's, there's you know, the ship may, be, may, may look not that great at the moment, but it can be yeah. fixed. If you're in a wheelie bin in the ocean on fire, so then we charge your chances really aren't so... Aren't so good. I mean, the, uh, these people they, they want to do anything. They'll do anything just to get away from Westminster, which really means basically means get away from England. They're mm -hmm. anglophobes. That's the word for it. Yeah. And it's the same thing when they say we want to join the EU. All this focus in the EU and other countries, and you know, it's oh, they're always talking about Norway or Denmark or Iceland or something like that. And then you're like, well, why do you never talk about England like that? Oh, yeah, we're making great relationships with England. Never, because you know what? They're anglophobes. That's what it comes down to. They're scared Absolutely. and they're frightened and they hate uh, English. That's what really, I mean, it becomes more and more obvious every day that that's what's driving them. Hi there, uh, Michael. So, is it, is that, uh, okay. Uh, thanks to everyone who's joining us on the chat. It's uh, good to see your comments. We've got Graham Gemmell here. He's asking, how is leaving the union with the UK and wanting to join another union with the EU independence? Well, it's of course. course. <laughs> Absolutely right. It's anything but. And we will we will be coming to that a little bit later in the the show. Um. So, yeah, I think you know we talked a little bit this last week. We had Nicola Sturgeon's comments about detesting uh, Tories. Well, you know, Tories of course include Red Tories in that, and I mean basically that includes anyone who's not a nationalist at all. And this idea that you know this you you're either with us or against us, a sink or swim kind of you you're. You, you you do anything to get away from this and it became it just seems more and more desperate all the time what's uh, going uh, just more desperate these desperate plans yeah. um, and I think but, people aren't really going for that Mary go ahead I was just about to say that I don't think people actually really understand how much pain would be involved yeah I mean I, I think it's only our side that have mentioned the word austerity but they haven't really been painting a picture of just exactly what would be involved you know, once this independence actually happened, 
um, and the financial situation. I mean, just talking about the financial situation alone. Yeah, I mean, okay, so let's start off with, we'll talk about currency. So we're in a really bin in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Turns out it's on fire. <laughs> and why? Because we have no currency and there's no hope of one coming soon. Right. No. I mean, what is this? What's the plan? I mean, this is from directly from Sturgeon. She says that we're going to use the pound for an indeterminate time, then transition to a Scottish pound, and yeah. then onto the euro. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so that's it's just a recipe for recipe for uh, instability. And that, if the lesson of the past few weeks is, you know, the markets don't like any of this instability at all. Absolutely David. right. Imagine anybody uh, trying to uh, attract investment in Scotland now. One of the first things you learn when, you, when you're looking at uh, the economic uh, criteria for a business venture is what's the political stability like or the political um, infrastructure, whatever. If you're saying that you've got Scotland has got it's part of the UK uh, in terms of currency now, it's then going to move to an, uh, an intermediary state when it's uh, using sterilisation. Then it's going to start its own currency and then it's going to go to a fourth stage. So that's four different currency setups in the next we don't know how long because as we will come on to it, we can't even get any kind of minimum or maximum time frame for any of this. So four separate currency um, circumstances for one country. Why on earth would that to happen? It's, it's, oh. it's, I don't, you know, it's actually incredible that she can stand up there and say this and all the journalists don't just start laughing. Yeah, I mean, quite. Really, yeah. They, they just be go, what is this? You know, she's standing there saying, I mean, we've got, you've got, we'll get a clip in a second, but standing there saying this stuff and it's like, well, you know, how is it even possible that people can think that, that, that take it seriously? Right, here's the thing about the, the time scales here, I think. Let me try Despite it the centrality of rejoining the EU to your case for independence, you yeah. cannot give us a time frame, can't say if it's five years, 10 years, 20 years. I hope it would be uh, shorter uh, than uh, all of that. But if well, I was to stand well, give here, give us a number then. Uh, no, I'm not for the reasons I've set out. I, I, a I, minimum number. It's, it's not no. my. It's not my responsibility to write your headlines. That's uh, probably not your responsibility. Well, it's actually well, her responsibility to write I'm, I'm putting facts in front of voters. I'm setting out a responsible uh, process that which we would go through to meet that objective of Scotland back in the European Union. And remember, independence is the only route for Scotland back into the European Union. It's just, I mean, she's trying to claim, I know this is about EU, but it's the same thing with the currency as well. It's just, yeah. when is it going to happen? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Hello, that, should the end of, that should be the end of the discussion. The journalist right. should just walk out and say, yeah. well, you know, if you can't give us an answer, then why are we even here? You know, because she says that um, the headline, I'm not here to write your headlines, but actually the headlines are supposed to be written based on what she says. Right. So the headline is, she has no effing clue. That's really what they think the headline should be. So, uh, you know, it's just... Go ahead. It's, it's really good. I mean, at least Tom Gordon, who was asking the question there, at least he came up with the, uh, the connection between the fact that they see EU membership as fundamental to everything, every part of the, the plan for an economic... Uh, independent Scotland's economic future. But even with that, when he points out, well, of course... Well, you're in this state, we haven't got your currency, you can't join the EU. So, do you think this is going to take? And he, as he said, they're five years, 20 years. And she said, oh, I think, I hope it'll be less than all of that. So, if, effectively, she's saying four years then. Okay, great. <laughs> no, it's like she can't even make up her own mind about what's going on there. I, I noticed that straight away. She's she's saying, oh, it'll be less than that. You're like, well, okay then. So, it's less than five years. So, can yeah. we hold you to that? And, right. I mean, that's that, and people are like, I mean, you just look at that and just go, why on earth can yeah. how can how can anyone take this part this any part of that seriously? So I was talking to uh, David Bull in the T Talk TV show, and we mentioned that to some extent. We said the the previous Growth Commission report um, focused on actual had actual numbers on it, and it was so roundly condemned because it was it basically said there was going to be years and years of austerity. Yeah. That this time they've decided not to put any numbers in at all, no numbers <laughs> and no, no time scales. So it's like a plan, you know, it's like a road to nowhere plan. It's it's. It's a road to nowhere, no time. What's the thing of no time? It's, yeah, yeah. Sean Never. Geddes has just said Infinity. exactly what you said. He said it's maybe just as well the white paper didn't have any figures on it. There's no numbers on the plan, are there? Well, the numbers are, are very basic. And what happened, you see on them, is there's a lot of this, we'll get some money from here, but the rest is borrowing. But the yeah. thing is, this is where the sharks come in, mm -hmm. right? The sharks are the financial markets. And they look at, 
you know, I, they just look for any weakness, any instability, anywhere they can make money, easy money, and they just look at Sturgeon. I'm pretty certain they just look at her and go, we can make a lot of money out of this. Yeah, that's that's precisely. Precisely. In fact, they might even push, you know, push independence so they could actually make money. So not, don't indulge in conspiracy, conspiracy theories, but, you know, why wouldn't you? You know, you think, I can make billions off this, if I, you know, from from these these, these idiots, basically. So um, markets love weak governments because they can hold them over the coals, high interest rates and so on. Um, so let's talk about each of those. Okay, I don't know, maybe briefly talk about each of those uh, segments uh, of diff- those different currency plans she has. First, what's your thoughts on sterlingization, uh, David? Right, sterlingization obviously is uh, uh, the, the process where you use the currency of what is effectively by then a foreign country. The Sturgeon was asked about this, and she was asked, you know, to you be using the, the currency of a foreign country in in her uh, speech, and said, "Oh no, it is not a foreign country. It is the United Kingdom. We are part of the United Kingdom." Yeah, but not after independence. <laughs> After independence, it will be a foreign country, absolutely. So I'm not sure why she made that distinction. She's trying to say now that, you know, the pound is used and we are not a foreign country now, but obviously that's not the case after independence. So once that happens and sterilization is the only way that you could use the pound in the same way that Panama uses the dollar, which is just to use the uh, banknotes you have in circulation, you can't print your own unless you've got a counterfeit press somewhere. You can't do it. You can't have any control over interest rates. It's, it's it By no means is that anything to do with independence. So you've got a foreign country, in this case, the UK, or it's rest, left of the UK, dictating Scotland's um, financial uh, monetary policy for an indeterminate period of time. We go, the, this, the First Minister herself can't even give an indication how long it will be, other than she would like it to be for less than five years. So that's it. So with the Scottish pound is going to come at the end of all that, apparently, um, once this central bank is set up. I mean, really, sterilization is just the last thing that any country would ever want to have no control over interest rates, no control over the money supply, just using a, a different another country's currency. How can that possibly be in the interest of anybody? I just don't understand it at all, really. No, it's, it's, it seems really crazy. You know, I mean, if the, if the rest of the UK decides to up interest rates or lower them, whatever it is, it's got, they completely conflict with any number of Scottish, uh, you know, po- Scottish government policies. And so that's not really in, any independence and could cause, co- well, would not could, it would absolutely cause a disaster. Now, about the Scottish, we have the Scottish pound. Now, to talk, we're now going to bring in an expert on Scottish currency matters here. This is lady, um, Emma Harper. Let's have a listen to what she has to say. When I was in, in uh, Mexico, it's work. Oh, why she stopped? Oh, thank you. Oh, don't stop, Emma, please. Oh, Come, okay, on, Emma. Back again. Come on, Emma. Come on, Emma. Why is she not stopping? In uh, Mexico, it's workable. Um, plastic translates anywhere where you are. So, and actually, oh, she's disappeared. There's been people that have been given more money for Scottish pounds when they're exchanging it at the moment. Oh. So, our Scottish pound has the propensity to be, to be worth really, more. Really strong. Oh yeah, we are strong. Sorry about that quality in <laughs> that clip there. I don't know what happened there, but uh-huh. yeah. So I mean, that's it. Of course, that because it's plastic that can be issued anywhere, the Scottish uh, pound has the propensity, big word there, to um, be, to be really, really, really strong. strong. Be really, really strong. Well, okay. uh, according to Emma, the Scottish pound is <laughs> worth more than the English pound, so yeah. aren't we lucky guys? Uh, that must be because they've got such lovely, pretty pictures on the Scottish version of the UK sterling banknotes. I mean, the fact that that's an, a, an elected representative in Parliament, saying that Scottish pounds get more money than English pounds right now, my God, mm-hmm. honestly. I mean, just no more than David Linden. David Linden, who's a, a, an MP, he appeared on an Andrew Neil show saying, oh, yes, we'd be able to print the pound after independence, even you, you, during sterilisation. It's our pound as well, Andrew. I, I, I still can't <laughs> believe Andrew Neil didn't pick him up in that. You, you can print it if you've got a nice um, photocopy or something. You can print it that way, but there's no way you can print the, the currency of a foreign country. Good luck trying that with Mr. Linden, honestly. You can print it on your printer at home. I mean, Absolutely. Maybe that's what he's talking about. Yep, um, oh, man, honestly. Who knows what these people but, are. I mean, and when you actually look at the polling, and there is some polling out there about who wants a Scottish pound, it's like I think 13% of people, Scots, want a pound. And, I mean, that's almost at conspiracy level numbers. So sure. there's, you know, there's, people, there's no appetite <clears throat> for a Scottish pound whatsoever. Everyone knows 
that a Scottish pound would be like a, a tennis ball floating yeah. on the ocean. Not tennis ball, a ping pong ball floating Ooh. in the ocean. Is that's it in what, the wheelie bin that's on fire? <laughs> well, I do, yeah. it could be. I'm trying to work this metaphor as much as I can today. And you all suffer because of it. Okay, finally, <laughs> we go, no, we have to clear this clip first of all. Okay, now here oh, is another oh. expert in Scottish currency. Oh, good. And we all love this one. This is the cl- one of the classics. It's a guy called Kevin Bridges. Uh, an independent Scotland will not be allowed to enter. Oh, this is, uh, why are these not playing properly? I think it might be me no. causing the problem, Mark. Actually. Why is that? If I move my mouse over here. Right, go. Right, we'll try it. Well, uh, I don't know what's going on. Okay, let me let me pause it and see. Let's see what's going on. Uh, an independent Scotland will not be allowed to enter. No, it's not working. It's not me. Oh, that's a class. Is a classic oh, clip there. Now, okay. Well, let's rather than try and play it, uh, we will uh, redirect you all to having a look at um, Kevin Bridges' thoughts on currency, where he talks about the new Scottish currency, the Smackaroonie. Indeed. Which, uh, of course, is uh, well, you know, two hundred billion Smackaroonie sounds a lot better than a de- having a deficit of two hundred billion Smackaroonie sounds a lot better than having a deficit of two hundred billion pounds, which is his point. But all jesting aside, have a good look at that one. Uh, anyway, look, well, okay, let's move well, on to the. Why th- don't we give everyone that for homework for next week? Oh, they yeah, have to watch Kevin Bridges' clip. It is, it is very good. That the whole <laughs> thing. Just look up Scottish. Uh, Kevin Bridges, Scottish Independence. Mm, sorry, it's not playing. I don't know why that is. I like the suspension comment here. Good, he's a. No, but anyway, it's just quite right, right? He absolutely is. <laughs> okay, well, I don't get to see the comments going by. So hopefully that's a good one. Um, all right, so moving on, uh, we have. Oh, okay, right. Um, all right, so thirdly, the Euro. Yeah. Okay, let's use the euro. Now, nobody knows what's going to happen with the euro in, you know, 15 years or 20 years, probably more like 25 years by the time UK gets, uh, Scotland gets into the European Union. The euro may not even exist. Um, yeah. What do you think of that, David? Every chance. I mean, we know that the euro is weaker than it's ever been. You get a lot of talk right now, mainly from um, Labour and the SNP uh, politicians saying, isn't it terrible? The, the the Westminster government have forced up interest rates. Well, actually, guys, I think you'll uh, mortgage rates. I should say. I think you'll find that the strength of the dollar, because of the artificial, artificially high level of the, at which the dollar has been pegged, is more or less responsible for the turmoil in the financial markets. Now, what people may not realise is that the euro is a, a, an all-time low against the dollar. It's gone below parity against the dollar, whereas only a short while ago it was like one, one you know, 15 or whatever. So it's just, it's ludicrous. You're, you're talking here about stuff that people just don't understand. And so you're, you're seeing here the euro, which is held up as being the, the example of the, the, the ideal um, currency for people, members of the Euro- European Union, to uh, 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 aspire to. And Scotland is just saying, well, we might, but we might not. I don't know, really. I mean, we're going to have our own currency first. Come on, guys, seriously? You know, so it's just, yeah. it, it's just, it's hard to take any of this seriously, Mark. That's the problem, because they're talking at such a, a preliminary level, such a, a level of, of no knowledge. Oh, come on, David. They've only had 88 years to get to that. <laughs> True, yeah. Come on. Yeah, true. Really? Yeah. Give them a chance. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, anybody who understands this stuff, they're looking at this, this, listening to this, thinking, guys, please come back to us when you've got something sensible. This is just rubbish. And a lot of their own people have said that it's rubbish. And, you yes. know, and, and we'll come on to that in a second. Actually, I want to go back to the Scottish Pound a lot because we didn't really talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the technical issues. But, you know, this, uh, this idea of the Scottish Pound, it's. it's What's going to happen to people's mortgages? Yeah. Right? Yeah. People, and we always talk about people's mortgages. That's one side of it. All the private sector, the public, sorry, public sector workers as well. Public sector workers are going to start being paid from the government in the Scottish new Scottish pound. Yeah. And that's just going to, as you say, floating like a ping pong ball on a, uh, in a wheelie bin out in the middle of the ocean. So, you know, the, what, how are they going to, what's the, it's, it's the pound? Even if it goes up and down a bit, it's not going to be anything nearly as volatile as the Scottish pound, and people are going to really see their their uh, incomes decline in real terms across in, in compared to the rest of the world because you can't run this deficit that we. I mean, 
the, the financial markets just say, well, you're in a deficit. How are you going to pay for this? You can't keep continuing borrowing all the time. So it's going to be one thing, well, you have to raise taxes. And that's never going to happen. We saw what happened when they raised taxes not that long ago. They raised taxes and they ended up getting less money. So they can't raise taxes. Everyone's leave. It's easy to leave. The border's just an hour down the road. So you're going to, the only thing they've got to do is cut services. So these people actually, and generally, might say to you know make a stereotype that many SNP followers are on low at low incomes. They're the people who are, and maybe in benefits as well. They're yeah. the people who are most likely to suffer under this ridiculous plan. Yeah, but the problem, Mark, is that most people don't realise that. I don't think no. they still think that even if we're running a huge deficit that they can still get their free prescriptions and they can still get their free bus travel and they can yeah. get their baby boxes. And they don't understand that if this independence actually happens, that they're going to lose all of those things. Well, they're going to lose a lot more than, than just the baby boxes oh, and course, stuff like that. They're going to lose, first of all, you get $13 billion a year. And then if there's any global pandemic or anything happens like that, well, who's going to be the lender of last resort? Well, of course, that's going to be China or Russia. Right, and then they're going to extract a cost in that case. So, and, and let's remember that the amount that Scottish people, every man, woman, child, even baby in Scotland, receives an extra two thousand pounds a year yeah. each more than people in other parts of the UK. So either they pay an extra two thousand pounds extra in taxes. So if you're a family of four, two parents, two ch kids you'd have to pay an extra £8,000 a year more in taxes or you have to give up £8,000 a year in services just yeah. to just to make up the deficit. It's a shocking number. We, will, we are going to be back in a second with more on this issue because it's a long, it's a big one and uh, we're trying to get into it as much depth as we can. Thank you for sending in your, all your comments so far. Um, we'll come back in a minute with uh, how it's been, even her own advisors have been rejecting yep. this plan. Yep. Right, okay, so our own economic advisors are like, oh my God, what the hell are you talking about? You know, um, so first of all, we had uh, Richard Murphy. And now they have that clip up, not clip, it's not, uh, up here somewhere. Richard Murphy, he said that he would actually vote um, no. Oh, well, here it is here, centres. Um, here we go. Uh, this is a guy. Now, I don't, don't put much stock in Richard Murphy, to be honest. He's, he's a guy who basically can't add up percentages. But apart aside from that, he is lauded as one of the independence movement, such as it is such that it's moving or not, uh, one of their leading lights in um, currency matters. Anyway, here he says, Richard Murphy, SNP currency plans and independence are so wrong, I would switch to no. So what happened, of course, when he said that, um, people started attacking him, SNP started attacking him. Guess what? Because he lives in England. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, started, you know, saying you're just saying that because you're English and blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. As expected. Now he, I uh, don't know if there's a thing there, but yes, because he just thinks that, of course, there's no control with the currency, right? And then we had another article by uh, Robin McAlpine, and he used a, which is quite long. It's very worth reading this article, but it can be summed up in uh, two, two, two words, which I didn't write down here, but I can remember because it's pretty easy. He called the plan utter pish. <laughs> Right. right. Mm, okay. to expand a little bit. He said he, what he actually said, as well as that's how he ended. Um, but along the way, he said that there was no realistic grasp of what being an independent country means. The report as a whole is more of an advert for the EU than it is mm -hmm. for Scottish independence. And it has Scotland rejoining the EU through the power of wishing for it very hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's quite something. It's a shocker, definitely. Okay, Mary, we're going to talk a little about the central bank. Mm. So, as soon as you're there, why not? Uh, what have you got? What have you got for us in that? Well, all of the plans that Nicola Sturgeon was talking about for Scotland after independence would rely on Scotland having its own central bank, um, which got me thinking because when we consider just how qualified and competent we think that the SNP. And the yeah. Scottish Green government at the moment we have at the moment are would be at setting up a central bank. Um, we just have to think of some of the things that the, they've been doing recently. 
that have been completely beyond their competency. Um, so if, if, you know, they couldn't even deliver a ferry service for the island communities, not even two ferries <laughs> out of the many that are needed. Um, they couldn't deliver a census. No. We don't know what's happening with that. They have already created a failing investment bank uh, that's not doing very well. They're not lending out the money they're supposed to. Um, they weren't able to take on the devolved benefits. They had to hand them back to Westminster. They still haven't got control of that. In fact, they couldn't even set up a return bottle scheme. So how on earth do they think that they can actually set up a central bank? I mean, this is way, way, way beyond their competence Yep. Well, I mean, we've not. Come on, Mary. Be fair. Uh, Kate Forbes has two years' experience as a, as an accountant, a trainee accountant in a bank. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's no doubt that she can handle a 32 billion budget. Uh, no, plus, plus actually more than that, 60 billion, whatever it is, budget. Um, you know, on their own without any problems whatsoever. I mean, you look at the problems that the UK is having right now in the international markets. Its central bank is having trouble. Central banks all over the world are having an incredible trouble. And these are places, you know, Japan, the United States. Uh, I mean, these are proper countries that have huge resources, huge populations, huge wealth generation. And they're not running necessarily running deficits, although some maybe Japan may be running some type of deficit. Um, so this is, you know, this is not a thing that can be done. It's not just like a... An easy thing. I think they said they could set it up for two hundred million or something like that, or the whole costs. Mm. Where well, David, you would know better about that. The whole cost for setting up um, independence and uh, 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 central banks and stuff like that. Yeah, they talked about initially. They talked about the entire uh, setup costs of an independent country would be something farcical, like one hundred and fifty million pounds. I mean, you know, they can't even it's get two ferries. <laughs> yeah, twice exactly. that amount. So, I mean, it, it really, I mean, the sum of money that was initially. Uh, uh, floated as as the, the total cost of the whole thing. Several times since then, people have gone back to the S and B to say, "Well, the cost of this initiative is now, you know, more than the cost that you said it would take for the entire setup of a new nation state." They have no idea. They're not even trying. They're not even guessing. They're just saying, "Oh, it'll be something. We don't know, but we'll, we'll, we'll set it all out and we'll tell you." But, but not right now, but soon, you know. So um, they've got no more answers now than they had eight years ago. It's just. We're just going. Through, we're watching some people. who are just going through an utter sham of uh, just. Uh, there's no way they can mean this. If they do, then they've got serious, serious problems because there's no answers in anything that they've said so far. None at all. So, and yeah. I mean, where they do it, I put some money in they, or some figures in. They, they, it seems to be big contradictions. They say, "Well, we're going to use the oil money That's for it. for." For to fund in, 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 in the fund, right? Yep. And then you're like, well, wait a minute, um, don't didn't, didn't you stop? You don't you want exactly. to stop new oil fields? Uh, <laughs> they're, now, they're now saying that they're not relying on oil. Oil uh, um, income now is a windfall, apparently. It's not uh, income; it's a windfall. Well, and that's the, well. Then okay, even if it is a windfall, then you're going to say, well, it's only oh, a windfall only happens every so often. At the exactly. moment, it's oil prices are high. They were a disaster in the past five years. Yeah. So you know you can't build a, a, a stable economy based on that. And so when you actually deep dig into the document, you find that most of it is funded by borrowing. Actually, if we yeah. can't raise money, we'll borrow. And then you're just like, well, who's going to give you the money? And and then it's like, and at what rate? And what are the terms? Absolutely. And you, know, you say, well, this is... Well, hold on, because the central bank wouldn't actually have any monetary powers. Um, it wouldn't be able to control interest rates. It wouldn't be able to do anything about, with quantitative easing or anything. The only function it would have would be to raise capital from the commercial banks yeah. in oh, Scotland yes. uh, to, to enable future bailouts. So basically, lender so of the, last resort. Well, they're not a lender. That means the banks are their own lender of last yes. resort. Yeah. That's exactly right, yeah. So okay. Scotland as a country would have no lender of last resort under only the well, plans. Only yeah. its, its banks would have. I mean, so it's they, nonsense. They, they seem to be saying that they won't borrow to cover the deficit, but they would set deficit rules, but we don't know what they are. Absolutely. And they said there will be caps on the deficit, but we don't know what the cap is or the projected deficit. So... I mean, just going from Scotland's share of the UK debt by population. So if we just took like the whole UK debt and we said, OK, what's the proportional amount? It yeah. would be about £64 billion pounds is what I've been told. Mm -hmm. um, and then our annual deficit, 
which was about fifteen billion pounds a year before COVID. Yeah. Uh, but it's now last year was about twenty four billion right. pounds, sort of twelve percent of GDP. Right. I mean, we talked about that. I don't know if that's in this section here, but next section about the euro. But excuse me. But you know, to get to be to to be in the euro, you need to have a deficit of three percent, right? That's right. And and have for an extended periods, well, I believe. And the euro, uh, or the eurozone. That's right. The eurozone. Right, to the get euro, to get right. in there, right. and the, they've, they're talking there a deficit of twelve percent. That means the cuts into public spending have to be nine uh, percent, right? So how is that even possible? If the Tories come up with that, you know they'd be like, you know, you're the most evil people on the planet, and quite Absolutely. rightly so, because that's not the way things work. You know, then that you you can do moderate. You can even if moderate cuts before were called austerity, this would be like the kind of mega austerity, not backed by anything at all. I want to just put a wee aside here that if you do want to uh, have a look at something that is re a really good review of uh, Scotland's uh, currency plans, um, I suggest you have a look at this um, uh, video here by uh, uh, Ronnie MacDonald, who is an expert or uh, is a professor. And I don't have to say any sound on it here, but uh, it's really worth it. It's about 10 minutes long. It goes through all the issues very clearly. It's an excellent thing done by Our Scottish Future. And I really think you should all have a good um, look at that. It just gives you a good idea. In a second, we will be moving on. Oh, wait a minute. Some, 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 just when we, yes, we'll be moving on. Well, I just wanted yeah, to kind of sum up on <coughs> Central yeah, sum up Bank. Number. So basically, we wouldn't know what our monetary policy would be so we don't yeah. know if we're going to be trying to maintain services at current levels and then borrow to fill the deficit. Yeah. But she said we wouldn't be borrowing um, for the, to fill the deficit. Or are we going to cut services to match the tax receipts? Or are we going to increase taxes can't, uh, to increase, close the deficit? Can't increase the taxes. Can't increase the taxes. If we're not going to borrow to the deficit, then the only thing we can do then is cut services. Absolutely. Well, I suppose they could, I mean, do what Ireland did, lower taxes and become a tax haven, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, that's a possibility. The scrap uh, as, uh, tax haven, which is what they keep um, slagging off the Tories for doing, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no. it's, so I, I mean, yeah. it's like, it's not just a rock between a rock and a hard place. It's a whole bo lot of boulders crashing down um, on from every direction. Yeah. Oh, on with the metaphors it's tonight. It's okay, it's in a second. Really we'll none of them sound yeah. good. <laughs> yes, in a second we'll be back. We'll be talking about the hardest of hard borders. Indeed. Press the wrong button. Okay, we go. Right, okay, so I think this is the last part we'll be talk talking about with this one. Is that right? Yes. Okay, I think we're good discussion so far. Let's talk about this hard border. Um, for the first time, they admitted there'll be customs checks. <laughs> I, I mean, I can't even say it without laughing. It's just so ludicrous that there are going to be custom checks on the M74 and the A1, two main roads into Scotland. I mean, have you seen how much how much traffic's in those on those roads? Yeah. Uh, but what about the what about the other ones? There's uh, I think there's how many? Well, there are twenty five other roads that cross the border. Right. And when she was asked, she said she. She said she would. I think. I think basically she said she would think about it later. <laughs> you know, we're talking about, we're talking about the road. Obviously, that's how most probably good travel. But we haven't even talked about the sea or the trains or flights. No. Oh yes. Uh, uh, yeah. you, will you need a passport check if you get on a train in Edinburgh going to Newcastle? Exactly. You have a passport. I mean, who are are these customs people going to be at every train station? Are they? Right. Will you need to a passport when you get on a flight from Glasgow to London? Well, we were down not that long ago in the borders, and we were across over backwards and forwards a few times on the bridge. Just a wee single track road, I think. Where was that place? I can't remember exactly where it was. Mm -hmm. It was uh, very pleasant. And you just walk across. But what, they're going to have some border check put on there, and then they're going to have to have barbed wire across the thing. Because, you know, you see the, 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 the problems that they have in the border, not the border, the channel um, migrant crossings right now. When people yeah. come in a boat, and they're prepared to risk their life to get across um, the, the water there in all types of conditions. And then surgeon says to them, well, actually, what you can do is you can come to Scotland, uh, you know, and then, yes. because it's part of the EU, free, free travel, right, area, well, and then you just walk across the border because there's there's 20, out of those 26, there's only 24, 24 of them are unmanned. Just walk across. Now, the first things that the English would, would do is put up a giant wall 
in yeah. that case. And we have this ridiculous situation where, it's, you know, I've noticed this, uh, the way they've been presenting this. I, I don't have it in the notes here, but the, 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 where they're saying it's England's fault for putting up a border because of Brexit. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute, that's blaming the victim. You're the ones putting the border up. You're the ones to blame for it. It's not it's not it's not the UK's fault, right? That you're deciding to put up to, to, to join a, to go off and join the EU. It's your fault. And that's where the border if a border happens, it's because of you. It's not because England chose to go to Bre- Brexit. What a ridiculous argument. Well that's, that's just exactly right, because what they are they're framing this in the way that Scotland is being dragged out of the EU against its will. What's really happening here is, let's remember, Scotland was offered the choice. Do you want to remain in the UK? Yes, we do. Great, so that's settled. Two years on from that, the people of the UK were asked, do you want to remain in the EU? And they said, no, we don't. Okay, that's what happened. Those are the two votes. The SNP can't accept the result of either of these. So in their twisted skewed logic they're saying oh no what really happened is that um you lied to us so that's why we voted to stay in and then as soon as we tried to stay in the eu like you promised us then we couldn't so you dragged us out therefore it's all your fault that's that's yeah and it wasn't even an issue for people in the first referendum the polling afterwards basically said it's like less than five percent five between five and ten percent of people thought that europe would be an issue uh, and, and it was a factor in their voting it wasn't an issue it's been made up afterwards but this kind of idea of blaming yeah. England, right? Because it would be England that'd be left. Blaming England for putting up a border because they decide to leave is is absolutely outrageous. I think, and I, I mean they would it. because why? How could they stop immigration? They would they have couldn't. To. Exactly. And they I think the couldn't. EU isn't going to allow twenty five crossing points between an, a, an EU nation and a non EU nation. Oh man, they're not going to allow that. Not a chance. England certainly would, because let's be honest, we know what would happen in the event that Scotland became independent. And let's say Scotland did become independent and had to sign up to Schengen, so you get limitless, uh, borderless travel all across all of the 27 or 28 states that would be then by then. And they, they proposed to do that without a border with England. What do you think those people who come to Scotland are going to do? You think they're going to want to stay in Echo Fechen? Not a chance. They're going to go to London. That's the whole point. Well, guys, I think a thing you haven't considered or it is that... Um... We're actually going to be the people who are going to be in the dinghies trying to get yeah, to true. England. <laughs> yep. okay. okay. Well, is that a wheelie bin or a dinghy? Well, I'm not uh, going on the wheelie bin and fire him. <laughs> right. I think I'll start saving for a dinghy now because I think we're going to need it. Well, that's if you're let, allowed to leave. We'll be landing know. on the beaches down in <laughs> yeah. Newcastle yeah. 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 or somewhere. I mean, I mean, how, how can anyone possibly think this is a credible the thing? I mean, to try to say, oh, there'll be some type of technology solution or whatever. Right, right, no, right, 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 she, was asked, she was asked about that today. She said, okay, tell, she was uh, rather on uh, Monday, tell us a little bit more about the technology. What kind of technology are you thinking about? And she's, well, 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 well you know, well, Nora uses technology and um, so don't worry, we'll be more detail on time, don't worry. But in any case, there'll be more detail on what you're it. And that's all she could do. She's always going to come back to the fact that oh, England are doing it worse, or England did it worse than we did. Well, this is this is the thing. I see this incredible grievance being built up here, yeah. and and it's a, a very unfair. I think this is this is a this is a. It, it, somehow that it's England's fault because they chose Brexit. No, that's not the UK chose, no. as you said. We, ch- we chose, you know, to leave the yeah. EU, and it's not putting up a new border isn't their fault. That's no. it. That's your fault if you want to do that. And this just idea is that this they're really right. You know, that's even Sturgeon said it as well. And and you just like it's it, it's it's the it's Brexit's fault that we are putting up a border. It's, you know, that is not uh-huh. a or not. It's crazy. Um, okay, so we're at, uh, oh, yeah, so then we talk about the border communities. You know what I mean? Imagine, you, I mean, as I said, we were just, we were down there not that long ago. We were near Berwick upon Tweed. Yeah, near Berwick upon Tweed. And, you know, people are going over one side to the other all the time. It's intermingling. Our communities have intermingled for hundreds of years. Absolutely. That border that used to be there was moved many, many times you know, through wars and so on. And one of the big advantages of of the, the UK was that the border disappeared. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they want to, they talk about being part of a single trade area and then they're like, oh, no, but then they want to cut off with their biggest na- neighbour who they trade with the most. It's pure anglophobia. There's nothing, I mean, there can't be any more description of no. it than that. No. It's just simply, we don't like the English. We'd rather be with the, with the EU. Now, that I think 
that only works for a hardcore of nutters. And they've been able to push this grievance and, and build up and build up. And Nicola Sturgeon is particularly responsible for this. She should have healed the country after 2014, but she didn't. And she's, you know, this level is just really, it's really shocking, I think, that that she's been allowed to build this this hideous level of anglophobia. Um, have you anything else to say about the the border there? Ah, well, so. John T. Scott is saying new market opportunities smuggling yeah. across border. We could <laughs> all become smugglers. <laughs> Tunnels. Yes, we need to t- and we've also, I think, I don't know if you saw it earlier, it was Anne Smith saying, saying wheelie, wheelie bins to cross the tweed. <laughs> Yay, <laughs> that's, that's a little bit <laughs> there. Um, I mean, it's the whole thing is pretty much is shocking. There's no no plan. There's no time scale. There's everything is written. I mean, to, to say it's a plan that's written on the back of a fag pack, it does a disservice to plans that are written in the back of a fag pack. It, it's, it's, just, it's just completely made up stuff. And what's even worse is that we're paying for this as well. You're paying for it, you know, for civil servants to do this drivel, right, this drivel. And, you, you know, and it's... Yeah, it's, it's exasperating. I mean, I said that to uh, on the show. It's like it's exasperating because we've got real problems to deal with. We've got real things, and they're often a fantasy. They've got this fantasy of you know Scotland, and 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 but at least Brigadoon was entertaining, and it was you know it was competent, and people could actually dance and they could do stuff, and we were thrilled with it. This is just it's turgid. Uh, it's desperate. Grim. Grim. It's grim. It really is. It's a, it's a complete disaster. And the people yeah. who are pushing this for should be ashamed of themselves. And I don't mean just Nicola Sturgeon herself. I mean the, the media. They should. And you can see it a little bit where they are actually questioning it a bit more. The questioning was actually pretty good on that press conference. But really, they, they should... It needs to get up up a level, really to the pure ridicule level. Empress, the Empress has no clothes. Yeah, it's yeah. time to expose that this is a dead end, a dead end project, and a dead end ideology as well. We had this increase in grievance. It's not good for anyone. It's not a way to do politics. Is to say those people over there are bad and we are better. It's just, it's just not. No. It's, it's depressing. I think okay. to some extent. Indeed. Okay, um, oh, go ahead, Mary. I was going to say, I think we're, we've run on quite long in that, and maybe we have yeah. to leave David's um, big, lie. big lie till next week, yes, David. Yes, we're, we're going to leave that anyway. Then. So That'll what we're going to do is we're going to jump straight on to the highlight of the week. It is the incredible, the amazing Zoomer of the week. Well, we hope you have enjoyed our show so far. Um, if you're new here, we have this section every week, Zoom of the Week, where we talk about all kinds of idiocy in that land. Um, and there's plenty of it. Um, but unfortunately, today's mine. I'm going to start with mine today. And it's, it's quite appalling, actually. And I've talked a little bit about this, how this grievance is increasing. And I, today I saw this image here that this lady called Yvonne Gilmer posted here. Uh, it's a picture of um, basically Scotland being raped by the United Kingdom. And above it says, hashtag Scottish Independence 2023. Now, we all know that Scottish Independence 2023 is not going to happen. But what? About, what is the story behind this type of imagery? Yeah. Why does anyone think that this is appropriate on any level? That this type of thing is is a, a way to make a winning argument, or even a way to make any kind of argument at all, and it's just part to me. It's part of an increasing hateful rhetoric over the past few weeks, and much of it promoted by Nicola Sturgeon herself. We all saw her say that she detested Tories, red Tories, whatever Tories there are, anyone who's not a nationalist. And when yeah. national leaders say that type of thing, they have a responsibility. They should have a responsibility not to say those things because when they do say those things, that um, people act on it. They think it's okay to like, put these type of images yeah. uh, around. And I think misleading her followers that is going to be a referendum, keeping that hope going, which was all that this thing was about, this uh, con- press conference was all about. It's just there's still hope. There's hope. Right, that's that's what she's selling. She's selling this hope in the face of, of actual reality. And um, but 
a certain point, her followers are going to say, you know, and, and, and she's got building up, saying that hope is hope plus hate. And that's all she's kind of got these two emotions kind of going together. So at a certain point, her followers are going to say, well, you know, we're being denied. We're not getting what we want, and it's Westminster's fault, these dreaded, hated Tories. And it's mm. just part of all this kind of dehumanising uh, language. There was another post the other day, here we go, this a uh, AOUB, all under one banner, basically yeah. says, if you stand against Scottish independence, you stand against the best interests of the people of Scotland. Well, that's a lie for a start. If you work against, then you're working against humanity. Working against humanity, it's the same type of language that the Nazis use against the Jews, that any group has always used to dehumanize others. You're not human. You're not, you, you're a bad person. You're a rapist. You're a, a murderer. You're a, uh, you, you're, you're a colonist. You're something just bad. And that will inevitably lead to, I think, to some, to for, some people take it into their own hands. Here's this guy here, Indiquint, uh, he says, uh, um, it says when we are denied a peaceful vote, we have a we have a mandate for. No, you don't. Then it's a very sensible question. When democracy is denied, violence always follows. Hmm. That is axiomatic. So what they do is they say you're a denier, democracy denier. You know you're you're a colonist, rapist, and so on. And then of course you don't. You deserve violence. Yeah, that's the way it works. And we that's I think the thing to me is that it's. Um, that's why it's important. It's, that's our our fight as the majority isn't about stopping a second referendum or uh, stopping Nicola Sturgeon. It's about removing this toxic nationalism and grievance from Scotland. I think it just it's really wrong. Uh, it's it's leading to dangerous and dark places, yeah. and it's not what we should be doing at all. And politicians like Nicola Sturgeon have a responsibility to rein it back. So to these people, I, my Zoomer, I suppose, is this uh, Yvette and the other people like them who think it's okay to post these extreme images against people who are following democratic rules. Um, so... Uh, Okay. That's that. Yeah. Sorry, but it's okay. It's a bit of a rant, I guess. Um, do you have anything to say on that, Mary? What do you think? Uh, well, I mean, obviously, I, th I think uh, as you do, um, I think things seem to be getting darker and darker. Yeah. And none of us want to see violence or, you know, where that can lead. But I think it is being stoked and it is being um, perpetuated so we have to to stop it as, as you know as much as we can as you say it's like it's not just about you know uh the majority isn't about being against the SNP i mean we are against nationalism and the reason we're Wait against nationalism is because of all the ugly traits that it's associated with this othering and using that to to incite you know violence it's very disturbing yeah, I mean, there's no place for this type of images in in in, in the debate here. It's just it's it's, ve it's really very wrong, and um, it, it's too, it's going too far, far yeah. too far. Um, and someone said to me actually, well, you know, she gets Nicola Sturgeon to condemn it, and I'm like, well, you know, that's not the way it works. She made this happen. She great. has to own it. That's that she it's hers. She hasn't healed the country. She's continuing to feed her followers this type of, you know, hope and denial and just to keep herself in power, basically, right? Because there's no, there's no hope. And they, 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 every time she says something that, that gives them a little bit of hope, then they all spring up in Twitter and social media and stuff like that. And they're like, and you're like, well, this is not nonsense. You're not getting anywhere. There's no chance of you getting anywhere. It's a dead end project. And, um, Hopefully, we'll see some changes in that over the next few uh, months. Okay, moving on. Uh, Mary, I think you're going to come up next. Or is it David? David. Yeah, actually. Next. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Okay, okay. So, my Zoomer of the Week this week is Ian Blackford. Uh, today, in um, Prime Minister's Questions, Blackford, the man with the skin of a rhino and the waistline to match, asked Liz Truss about state pensions. He seemed very angry with Liz Truss, and he seemed to be implying that she wasn't going to follow through with her promise on state pensions. 
So the Prime Minister reaffirmed her commitment to the pension triple lock, which ensures pensions will rise in line with inflation. Blackford appeared not to hear this answer, and he went ahead with a scripted question in which he said, the Prime Minister had thrown 12 million pensioners under the Tory bus. That was his answer. Everybody in the front bench was absolutely uh, aghast at this. They looked at each other as if to say, did I just hear that right? Uh, he blundered on, saying, it's no wonder the Prime Minister had such poor ratings with an answer like that. But the answer she had given was, <laughs> yes, we are going to do it. And it, it, she literally <laughs> was like, did you just hear what that guy said? So Blackford's <laughs> incompetence just brought a lot of much-needed hilarity to the government front benches. But they literally were laughing to a man at his mistake, which he didn't even seem to notice having made. So it just confirmed the long-held suspicion that Blackford just has his two scripted questions, as Sturgeon often does. Uh, he'll ask the first one, get an answer, wouldn't even listen to tell. I knew you were going to say that, although the woman said the, the absolute opposite of what he was expecting. So on the basis that he's unable even to think for this, the, uh, uh, this, the space of one sentence on his feet, my Zoomer of the Week this week, not for the first time, is Ian Blackford. Well, you know, I think his feet were probably tired of carrying all that weight around. But anyway, that shouldn't be made talking about that type of thing. Um, one thing I noticed, actually, you're talking about these polls um, and that Labour are going to increase, you know, according to the current polls, Labour are going to win, but Liberal Dem, Lib Dems are going to become, you know, second part, the, the third party, right? Yeah. So that means the SNP are going to get kicked off of that. So they won't, they won't have that uh, position where Blackford rises up you know, yeah. every week, and is a, a, the whole country groans. Exactly. So perhaps that will, that will be uh, one um, benefit of the Tory one demise. <laughs> so I, we're talking about pensions. Um, I didn't bring it up earlier. Was anything mentioned about pensions in Nicola Sturgeon's economic plan? Did it? Yeah, she did ask the question. Someone would uh, ask the question about um, would Scottish... Uh, pensions, uh, responsibility for Scottish pensions fall to the Scottish government or, or following independence. And she was she was clear. You know, she always says she's clear. Well, this time she actually was. She said, right. yeah, well, as we said in 2014. So I think she was kind of slapping down guys like Blackford and, and there was another one who said, oh, no, no, it will be the UK pension pot will pick up Scottish. But no, he would. There's no such thing. No, so she not. did, in fairness, she did say, no, no, Scotland, the Scottish government will pay pensions. One thing on pensions, if I can just add, there's a suspicion now that uh, the Scottish government is thinking of means testing the state pension after independence, and that, which would be extraordinarily worrying. That would mean to people in Scotland that after independence, if you've got savings or you get a house, then your state pension is adjusted down. Well, so, it's no surprise uh, in Ireland after they, they get independence, the state pension was cut by 25%. Yeah. So, that, I mean, it's just it's inevitable it's going to, that, would, that would happen. Moving on, we're going to do uh, Mary Zimmer. Mary. Okay, well, someone had to do it. My Zoomer of the week is Nicola Sturgeon, and it's for her manner at the press conference yep. when she was presenting her economic plan this week. Um, the plan, of course, that would isolate Scotland from the rest of the UK. Uh, first of all, you know, she was really less, if I say less than convincing, I think I'm being kind of kind mm. to her. Um, there was absolutely no transfer of enthusiasm. She didn't look as if she was believing what she was no. saying. In fact, she looked as if she was a bit annoyed that she had to say it. Um, and it, it's maybe a good thing that she didn't believe what she was saying. Otherwise, you know, we might think she was a bit insane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and secondly, she was extremely rude to journalists and the other people who were there. Yes. I presume that they'd been invited. And then when she got there, um, they're trying to ask questions. Uh, I mean, you have to you have to ask, you know, who does she think she is by belittling, interrupting, and talking yep. down to the people that she's trying to sell her plan to? Right, here I've got the clip here. Okay, here we go. that money in an oil fund I'm not to help the economy to... in the long term, and also say that there won't be tax rises or spending cuts. I'm not trying. Or expensive borrowing. Of the... Well, I'm just I... asking you: Will there not be those things in the yeah. short to medium? You find if I'm able to speak, you get better answers than if you just keep talking. Condescending, okay. Um, I am not trying to say really? that we do both. So as we use oil revenues to invest... To you know, just like that. No, I mean, yeah. absolutely. Well, she just didn't sound as if, she, you know... She, the, a person who talks like that is a person who's not confident in what they're Quite talking right. about. Well, in that case, she had the... Basically, she there was articles written about it in the National and saying, oh, the journalist interrupted her. She actually interrupted him. 
And then, right. then she blamed him for interrupting her. And, and it's just a person, you go out and say, look, I've got this great plan. We've done sales, sales. You know, any salesperson who's done, person does sales, you need to, yeah. as Mary says, you need to transfer of enthusiasm. This is the best thing ever. This is going to be great. We're going to have a great time. We're going to be wonderful out in our own in a wheelie bin yeah. on fire. And we're going to be shutting down fire. No sharks, no fire. There's just no, no wheelie no, bin. We love sharks. Luxury speedboat. Yeah. That's the way we're going. We're heading off into the sunset. You know, it's fantastic. We're all good. We've got some drinks and what have you. You know, everyone's got, got a big party. None of that. It's just like, we don't have an idea. We don't have a clue. You're bad people for asking me about it. And, um, you know, why Why am I even here? That's the feeling, right, Mary? Absolutely. <laughs> and as you noticed at the end of the, uh, the press conference, when you said that, it walked out, deathly silence. Absolutely <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. You know, people like, I think everyone was saying, was that it? Just like, people should be uh, rah, rah, rah. And this is the thing, exactly. you know. Yes, but the whole thing comes down to there's no support, no popular support for a start. You no, know, they just you need to have a big support behind it. You know, if it was seventy percent of the people and there was a momentum and there was, you know, and people thought, okay, well, we'll take the risk. But you know, no, it's it's just getting increased. It's increasingly, you know, smaller and smaller circles as she circles yeah, the drain, basically. Right. Okay. I am actually going to choose Nicholas Sturgeon because yeah, yeah. it's my turn to choose and. Uh, I think that was an awful performance uh, yeah. on on there. Uh, Blackford, of course, is a, uh, always a worthy nom- nominee. Right, conscious we run over a little bit, but we're, we'll be finished in a second. Um, we're going to be back with another show uh, next Wednesday, October the 19th, at usual time of 7pm. Absolutely. Thank you, donors, for all your support. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much. And thank you to UK Union Voice and United Against Separation and the other pages that support us. Thanks you again, Mary. And thanks to us. <laughs> great, I get all the airtime. Uh, thanks to all of you who, who put up your comments tonight. Really appreciate it. There's, a, there's always so many of them and it's a pleasure to put them up. Thank you. Um, and uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just go there now and do that. Uh, thought for the week is, I think it's like what Barack Obama said. Uh, you know, if you if you divide people, if you've got if you if your campaign is to divide people, you cannot bring them back again later. It's yeah. just not going to happen. There's too much division in Scotland. The, this whole sturgeon uh, re- never end them. And uh, Scottish nationalism has to go. We have to move on from this. It's a dead end. Uh, All right. Thanks for being with us tonight. We will see you again next week. Uh, It's good night from me. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Have a good week, everyone. See you next week. Take take care. Okay, that should actually be this one.